What's up everyone? My name is Paul and this is your typical shitty Chinese scooter that's been abandoned outside for years. It doesn't run and it's in really bad condition. Today I will do a thorough inspection and see what this scooter needs and how much it will cost to fix it. I'm also going to try to get it running. This scooter is pretty gross so I'll start by washing it off. I don't think it will look good but at least it won't be super dirty. This thing looks like it got caught in a tornado. Whoever owned this scooter was very bad at riding. And you'll see typical Chinese scooter defects like the tail light bulb melted the housing. The foot peg is bent and the fairing is super smashed on this side. The fuel door looks like it used to be taped on and now it's just gone. The old vinyl on the seat is brittle and torn. You can tell this scooter spent its whole life outside and it didn't age well. They made sure to crash it on both sides. The fairing had duct tape and now it's just hanging down. I do like this style of scooter and this one even has an eagle on the fender. The chrome is all rusty now and the front brake doesn't work at all. Let's take a closer look at that brake. Two Phillips head screws hold the master cylinder cap and then there's a rubber seal. This thing is completely empty. Where did the brake fluid go? I tried to do a quick brake bleed. Open the bleeder, pull the lever, close the bleeder. The brake still doesn't work. I think the piston seals and the master cylinder are bad. Also, check this out. The plastic sight glass dissolved in the brake fluid. Wow, that is so bad. It's just dumping out the fluid. Let's keep going. The rear brake lever is on the left side. This one feels like it works. It's a cable actuated drum brake. Let's try the key. It fits the ignition switch and I can open the seat compartment. I'll put it on the center stand. That works fine. I wonder what the oil looks like. That's actually not too bad. It has the right amount of oil in it and the oil doesn't look dirty. I want to see the engine so the seat compartment will come out next. There we go. Just four bolts and it comes out. I see two power wires and a ground wire in here. Let's connect them to a fresh scooter battery. Turn the key on and I have turn signals. The horn works. Let's go for the starter next. And it cranks too. That's amazing. It's not starting yet, but you can't have it all, I guess. This little hose on the side of the engine by the center stand is the carburetor fuel drain. It looks like the screw is missing. This is very good news. You'll find out why in just a minute. Let's get the battery out of the way and unplug the idle enricher connector for the carburetor. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the two intake manifold nuts. The throttle cable takes a 12 millimeter wrench and a little bit of finagling to get it out. Loosen up the airbox clamp with a Phillips screwdriver, then go after the vacuum hoses. A little bit more prying and the carburetor is ready to come out. Place the carburetor in a pan for cleaning. This hose is the fuel inlet and this is the vacuum line that operates the fuel pump. And this is the fuel drain hose. It's missing the screw so I'll pull it off and just plug the hole in the bottom of the float bowl. I want to open up the float bowl but these screws are stuck. I have a few tricks though. Uh oh, the vice grips didn't work either. My impact driver got it though. Sweet, let's take those four screws out. Open up the float bowl and this carburetor is super clean. I got very lucky the previous owner drained the gas. Okay, let's take a look at the jets. The little one is the main jet. These are usually plugged from sitting in old gas. Mine is clean. The long one is called the pilot jet. This controls your fuel just above idle. Also very clean. I usually replace jets, but I can just put these back in. I'll spray the carburetor with carb cleaner inside and out just to make sure there's no dirt hanging out. Now I can just reinstall the float bowl. This thing might just work. I'm never this lucky. All right, let's put this carburetor back in here. Bolt down the manifold first, then hook up all the stuff. You'll have one fuel line, at least two vacuum lines, an idle enricher wire, and of course the throttle cable. You can pause the video here to see what all the things are. Let's make sure that throttle works, and it's good. I filled the tank with some fresh gas and now we can find out if this engine wants to run. It's turning a bit faster. And it started! Honestly, I'm a bit surprised. This is awesome. She's a runner, folks. Look at that. There's something rattling in the tail light. That's funny. This scooter looks like shit, but it wants to run. Most of the lights, including the headlight, work. And look at that, the eagle's eyes light up. This is so good. I have a theory about Chinese scooters. A lot of them break after just a few months and you'll see them on Craigslist for cheap with very low mileage. The best Chinese scooters have more miles because they were good enough quality to actually survive a bit of riding. 
This one still wants to go after being abandoned outside for years. I have a few more things I want to inspect on this scooter. The air filter is behind the fairing and they give you this access panel. The only problem is, Chinese scooters aren't actually that well designed and getting to the air filter is a weird and cumbersome process. The air box is big and has a million screws that you can't reach. Okay, and here it is. It's a paper filter with foam on top and it's pretty clean. To take the kickstart lever off, you have to completely remove the bolt and spreading the clamp with a screwdriver helps. This scooter has 5,000 miles on it, so the drive belt is probably bad. The transmission cover has a lot of bolts too. Some of them are different lengths, so keep track of them. And there it is! Chinese scooters have a continuously variable transmission. Look at that! The belt is torn. The variator holder tool has two pins that hold the variator. The nut takes a 17mm socket. This is the drive face. The engine turns this piece and the belt rides on it. And here's that belt. The size is 835, 20, 30. Now pull off the variator while holding the back with your fingers so the rollers don't fall out. Centrifugal force moves the rollers out as you go faster and it moves the belt higher on the drive face giving the scooter a higher gear. Check the rollers for flat spots. They're only slightly flat so I won't replace them yet. Let's inspect the clutch too. Hold the housing with a strap wrench and use a 17mm socket on the spindle nut. That looks okay. It's a bit rusty from sitting, but not bad. This is the clutch. The belt is always turning, but the clutch waits until around 2000 RPMs to engage the wheel. This speed can be changed with different clutch springs. And finally, let's check the tires. The back tire is worn out. I could ride a bit longer if I want to be cheap, but I should replace it soon. The front tire looks good. It's not worn out, but it's 14 years old, so the rubber is bad and I should also replace it soon. I got lucky, and this scooter wasn't left with gas sitting in it, so I didn't have to buy a new carburetor, but it will still take $150 in parts to get this thing on the road, and that's not counting the tires. I got this roll of black duct tape to fix the bodywork, and this should be a pretty cool scooter. Now, I won't be riding this old horse off into the sunset tonight, but Stay tuned and I'll fix all the things in the next videos.